This is LS11. Well, good evening and welcome to LS11. A slightly different time than we uh, usually broadcast. Uh, We're live on uh, YouTube, we're live on Facebook. And if you're not listening to those, then you've downloaded the podcast from your favourite podcast app. And thank you very much for doing so. My name's Darren Harper in the studio with me. As ever is our resident rock star from the Pigeon Detectives. It is, of course, Ryan Wilson. Good morning, mate. Evening. I've just said (laughs) good good morning. morning. Unbelievable. (laughs) Good evening. Honestly, that's just, it's just. Good evening. It sounds weird, doesn't it? It is. It does sound weird. We've been once in a while, have we? Been a while, actually. I think Neil Sullivan might have been the last one. I think Neil Sullivan was the evening one, yeah. Yeah. I've just noticed, I've just come up on my watch. I've got a a missed call from Ryan. Yeah, that's me. Oh, that's you. Okay, so you tried to call me earlier. I did try to call you. Right, okay. (laughs) (laughs) That would be it. Uh, And also, thanks very much uh, for downloading. This is episode 50. I thought it were 50. Episode 50. 50. It's about 50 or 51, I can't remember. And I didn't realise until I was just typing it into the title there when I was, uh, and I checked up and I'm like, no, it's episode 50. Big 5 oh, eh? The big 5-0. It's all right, isn't it? Don't look a day over 21. No. Nope. Uh, good news. <laughs> uh, in the studio with us uh, this evening, we've got the former Ipswich, Millwall, Barnsley, Doncaster Rovers, Rotherham United, and of course Leeds United's Richard Naylor in the studio. Good evening, mate. Good evening. Thanks for having me on. Uh, absolutely fantastic. You obviously you waited to, to 50 to get me on. You were that desperate to get me on. I got to 50 before I got an invite. <laughs> it's a landmark episode. <laughs> right, so we that's thought, what, it is. what do we need to do uh, for a landmark episode? Richard Naylor needs fair to enough. be on. Yep. I think that's fair enough, really. Uh, so, listen, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, if you've got a question about anything that's been going on uh, for uh, Leeds, United, uh, then give us a shout. And of course, uh, you can comment on Facebook and on YouTube. And if you've got a question for Richard uh, about his time with Leeds United, then uh, do get in contact with us uh, here on uh, either the Twitter or on YouTube or on uh, Facebook as well. Uh, and big thanks to our sponsors, the Social Maze. Huge Leeds United fans who offer social media management to uh, loads of businesses, uh, ensuring your business on your own or you work in and uh, maximising its social media potential with packages starting from £99. And also the Terrace are offering quality football merchandise. Uh, you won't get it in a club shop. They are the sponsors of uh, Any News Graham, which is coming up a little bit later on. And we'll find out more about our sponsors later on in the show. This is LS11. Best put the microphones back on. I think we've had some sort of like audio problems there for a second, but uh, hopefully not as bad as they were last time. Uh, so when the yeah. audio just cut out, I think it's I think it's sorted now. Good. Uh, two levels up. All right. So let's start uh, with uh, Derby, shall we? Yeah. Okay. Head in hands time. Uh, yeah. I, I I don't really know. I feel as though we're a little bit like a broken record. Because I feel as though we've had this conversation about domination and domination and then like just things slipping up at the end so often over the last year and a half. Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, like you said, we talk about it almost every week. Um, possession don't really count for anything if you don't score the goals. And and that's what it was on Saturday. We dominated the game. And, and I'll just say off air to Rich, one of the most dominating games I've seen Leeds United play I'm not over exaggerating. Arguably, in the time I've seen Leeds United play, which is going on 20 years or so now, and um, that first half in particular, we should have been three, four nil up. Derby, absolutely woeful, absolutely terrible. I've not seen a poorer team turn up at Ellen Road that's on in the same league as Leeds United. Um, let's say I've seen League Two teams come come and play better football than that. They tried to play out from the back. They couldn't do it. Big donkeys like Richard Keogh just not good enough and the most frustrating thing for me was we didn't take three points and chance after chance after chance went begging and we didn't score Um, I suppose the best chance was the penalty if the penalty goes in and it's a different game I've only seen the highlights and and like you said there was 
a lot of half chances. There wasn't mm. one where you're going, he should have scored that. He should, you know, apart from the penalty, really. And the, the yeah. penalty was a big miss because, you know, 2 0, the game's dead and buried. At, at 1 0, teams are still going to stay behind the ball. They're still going to sit in. They're still going to make it hard for you. So 1 0, you know, it's one of them dodgy scores because they're, they're, you could see how they celebrated afterwards. Oh, that they, they, yeah. they were desperate to get a 1 1 so, yeah. or a 0 0 or whatever. So they were just going to sit in and wait and wait for one chance and. and you know they got the sucker punch at the end, but the penalty goes in, or you get two goals up. They have to come out, and then you, you score three or four. But it's not happening mm. like that at the moment. And the, you know, it's the respect that teams are showing Leeds when they come to Well and Road now that, that they will sit behind the ball, they will be happy with the point, and you know it's up to to us to to work it out really and, and then come up with the answers. And couldn't quite do that. Well, that's right. I mean, you're right there. There, there were primarily half chances. Obviously, the penalty is a penalty. It's a different one. Um, but what I would say, in a positive light of view, I thought all the players generally played really well. Um, Bamford's coming for a bit of hit and miss with fans because his all-round games has actually significantly improved this year. Um, as a centre-half yourself, you, you'll know when you come up against a striker who you know, digs his elbows in, he's, get, he's getting a bit rough, he's a bit tummy. You'll know going into the game, you go, yeah. right, he likes a bit of a yeah, tough yeah. this lad. Last year, Big centre house like yourself would have probably think, oh, it's going to be an easy day. I've got Bamford, but this year maybe Knox has changed his style a little bit. But unfortunately, his finishing is just off. Um, I, I think it is harsh the stick he's getting though, because if you look yeah. at his record for all the clubs he's played for, he he scores maybe I don't know exact figures, but he's only like a one in four, one in three scoring. Yeah, rate. it's not, it's and, not and bad it, at all. And his ratio for leads is better than that. It's, mm-hmm. it's like a one in two. So if he's scoring one in two, you can't really. That's know very it, good. That's yeah, that very good decent. Rate, yeah. and, and like you say, it's all general all round play mm. is good. So it's difficult to to see you know how you can criticise that if he's scoring one in two and he, and his hold up play and his his general play bringing people into the game is good. Then you know maybe we've got to be looking for other players to chip in and, and help out a bit more. I oh, know you're 100 right there because one of my biggest criticisms with Leeds United and it's been for for a while. I, I feel like we're missing a real number 10 player even though people like Matthias Click has stepped up and he's doing he's doing well and but for me sometimes he can be a bit isolated can Bamford and um and when you a, a, a you know center forward up front and you've got two center halves on you it's going to be difficult for anybody I don't care who you are you know um so I get that um but it's just not falling for him as well you know no. I, I don't it's just so unlucky and and I'm I'm not kidding you 30 Four thousand, whatever they were in Ellen Road on Saturday, were all literally every time that ball Bamford won the ball at edge area, they're all willing him to score. People want him to score, you know, um, for him, and he gets still gets a fantastic reception because he's working for 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 the shirt, he's playing for his shirt, he's playing for the badge, and you know that's credit to him for that. But it's just not happening. I mean, he had a chance to hit the post and. Uh, granted, he's a left-footed player, yeah. but a right-footed player would have scored that because he kind of ran onto the front post and tried to hit it with his left foot, and he did hit it with his left foot, but his left foot was pulling it away from yeah, the goal. Yeah, I remember the chance. Yeah. And, like you say, it's good movement, though, and yeah. he's getting in the yeah. right areas. He got across the defender, and he, like you say, hit the hit the post outside of the post, but he did actually win the penalty, didn't he? He did. He, he good, w- good, with a yeah, good bit of really skill. Well, so, yeah. Yeah. You know, the, there's, there's lots of positives to his play, and I, yeah. I, I would have thought it would come good for him. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and away from home, Slightly more space, uh, maybe that's where he'll pick up more of his goals this season. Well, Leeds have been playing better away from home. That's well picking up better results anyway, and that's probably testament to. Well, maybe the scenes that come to Ellen Road, like you say, they come and shut shut up shop and um, make make it difficult for us. Like like you said earlier, Derby would have been happy with a nil nil. Obviously, very happy with that one when all in the end, and teams probably will come to Ellen Road and think a point's not a bad result. Um, so yeah, there's definitely an element of that. We spoke. You mentioned the penalty earlier. What are your thoughts on? These little tippy tappy penalties, <laughs> because look, I never played football, certainly not a professional level. For me, I used to love watching Alan Shearer just ping him into the top corner, you know, yeah. power and pace. Yeah, and when, like, when you see someone like Kane take a penalty, it's, yeah. it's unbelievable, isn't it? And, yeah. and then you see like a, a little soft side foot one rolls past the post, you think, why? Why is he doing that? Yeah. But if that's your your technique and you're comfortable doing that, there's, there's no point in trying to get someone to do something they're yeah. not comfortable with. I mean, yeah. I I don't think I ever took a penalty in a, a professional game. I don't. In fact, I'm sure I didn't. I think we went into when I was at Ipswich, we had a penalty shootout at, at Anfield in. The league cup and 
I was dis- I was like Homer disappearing into the bush. You <laughs> I know, imagine, I, I, yeah. it was, it's just not for me. I just some people are good at them, and some people just you know I, yeah. I, I got pieces, so I, I wouldn't take one. But yeah, it's fair play standing up there and taking it on. Yeah, if that's his technique, that's his technique. But probably I'd like to have seen Bamford take it. I'd, I'd like the strikers to take them. Yeah. Usually they're the ones who are confident who who, are, who should be taking them. We've had um, quite poor. Poor history of penalties or leads. Um, in the last five or six penalties, I think we've scored, missed four, scored two. It's quite bad. And and you speak Bamford. Bamford scored one, then he missed one. Pablo Hernandez scored one, then he's missed one. Um, so so some so it's, yeah. it's click scored one, missed one. Yeah. So it's it's this um, inconsistency really. You know you can't. They're not. Maybe next the next penalty. Maybe Bamford will go. You know I'll step up again. Click might be lost to confidence. Yeah. You don't know, but he might step up and. You know, he might do the tippy tappy thing again and just yeah. side foot it into the bottom corner, or he might actually put his foot through it. We don't know until we next get a penalty. But um, Leeds, <laughs> in the last sort of season or so, we've never hardly got penalties. Now, we've had a couple, and I kind of think they're a bit more stressful than they were, for really. I think I'd just rather <laughs> not get them and just score an open, a goal and open play. I'll try to. But, um, but yeah, obviously, ultimately, a very disappointing day. Leeds' goal that we did get was, was an own goal. Great build up by, by Leeds and putting them under a lot of pressure and a uh, good strike by Dallas which the goalkeeper saved onto onto Max Lohm and it just literally couldn't do anything about it, just hit his leg and went in. Um, yeah. but you know, we could have had two or three at half time and certainly I think seventy odd, seventy fourth minute I think the penalty was roughly um that that have, goes in. That goes in. It's game. It's game over. Look, you know, completely game over. Yeah, but there are a few noises about some of the substitutions actually, um, because in the last couple of games we have got the the new young lad from Arsenal in Ketier and um, and Costa from from Wolves and um, they've been changing games significantly. But this was one of the first games this season that they, they didn't really change the game. Didn't have no respect. impact on it. No. Well, that's what you what mm. you're asking for when people come off yeah. the bench. You give them that that 20 minutes. You hope that you know they they have some sort of impact, some sort of influence on the game. But yeah. it doesn't always work like that no. with the best will in the world. It's yeah. very difficult to change how the game is going. And like you say, Leeds were dominating it anyway. So it's just whether you can you've got that key to unlock it and you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it's yeah. it's, it's easy to criticize afterwards but you know you, you make the, yeah. as a manager you make a decision and you, and you take your chances i mean one of the decisions well he brought douglas on um late on in the game and it seemed an odd one for me that stuart st- douglas stuart douglas which the um sky Ref, uh, referee <laughs> uh, sky <laughs> what is it commentator we're that's calling him. him the other day that's him oh no we're calling dallas Stuart, Stuart Douglas, one Stuart of, Douglas, yeah. and Barry Dallas, Barry Dallas. Um, so Barry Douglas, God, I'm getting confused. Then uh, <laughs> Barry Douglas, <laughs> <laughs> Barry Douglas. Uh, yeah, he came on and is, is he got he's got good delivery from set pieces. He's got very good like delivery, so maybe. But it, it just seemed to check up the defense a little bit at a time when when Derby were getting into the game and yeah. and. Um, the originally the, the he's, he plays left back and originally yeah. the, the 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 start of Derby's move came from the right, right and then the ball came across and not saying he's to blame for it of course but you know as a defender yourself yeah you don't you don't want no disruption to the back four yeah. but you would suggest Douglas is a better defender I would have thought because he's played a lot more games at full back than than you bring off Dallas for him he brought off Hernandez, Hernandez. It, it were a, right. it, so it were yeah it, it was, it was bit, clearly to try and lock the game up really yeah. but and Anders are playing right wing and the it, it shuffled around a bit that's the yeah. thing Alioski went on to the left wing Costa went over to the right wing because Alioski were playing left back at that particular yeah. point so there were a lot of the whole lot, squad yeah, shuffled a lot of big changes uh, do, does that un, does yeah, that disrupt un, momentum yeah, in your opinion the, there's nothing better than playing in a regular back four with a keeper yeah. behind you and everyone knowing the job and everyone trust you know, yeah exactly and there's good communication and you, you build up that over time and it, it does take time and the yeah. more you play together the better and you don't want disruption to that if you can you know at all you know have that but sometimes you managers want to make an attacking substitution they might take off a full back and, mm. and put on a winger or whatever but in this case it does seem slightly strange yeah. but yeah. but look I'm no football manager or coach or anything so no. I just have to trust in Bielsa really but obviously it didn't pay off um, Derby had one shot and, and that was in the 91st minute and that ended up in the back of the net so um, that was very disappointing and we drew the game so yeah to conclude <sighs> it was yeah a, a sigh um, oh. and the whole of Ellen Road was sighing and um, it were 
so reminiscent of I mean even the the, the Nottingham Forest and Swansea game Alan Road this yeah. season both games we dominated and Swansea we got beat we, we couldn't even score against Swansea then Nottingham Forest were dominated scored and then we let them equalise and it's just frustrating it worries me because I know there's still a long time in the season to go but you could arguably say that's you know what for seven seven points dropped pretty much three dropped against Swansea two dropped against Forest two dropped against um, Derby so that's a lot of points come the end of the season seven points could be a it's significant loud, amount it? It's, it's, it is but we're top of the league yeah so, well that's, you know, that's it, the thing other, yeah. other teams are going to drop points so yeah. if you're top of the league you'll be you'll be happy at the end of the season won't yeah. you so it swings and roundabouts with it really I, I, I do agree that you know you, you don't want it you want a home form to be you know rock solid and, and but if you're picking points up away from home then you know balance it out because that's, yeah. that's a difficult thing to do in the championship to win games away from home and, and, and we're doing that pretty well at exactly moment, right yeah, yeah. So. no but but on, on the positives of the game we, we were fantastic we played yeah. very good football yet again we dominated the game yet again just if we can take some of these chances <laughs> you know that I'd, I'd put my house up we'll win league you know but we've just got to take these chances and look there's nobody's going to be kicking themselves more than Click for missing that penalty and, and arguably Bamford etc for, for not maybe taking the chances we know that they'll, they'll be in training they'll be disappointed yeah. um, but we are the top of the league still and we've got to take that into account and we're doing alright and like Richard said like other teams will drop points but we've just got to really kind of tighten up that home form because like I said, potentially, you know, possibly that seven points that dropped, that could come about on the backside come the end of the season. Yeah, really good. Uh, apologies, we have had some sound problems. Have we? S- surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, it sounds like we have like a broken record this last couple of weeks. It's, it's something to do with the sound card. I think we're, we're coming through the webcams at the moment, so at least you're getting some sound through this. Uh, but if you want a perfecto audio quality product, then download the podcast. Uh, they've got loads of comments coming in, though. There's loads of questions coming in for Richard, which we'll get to uh, a little bit bit later as well Phil Clark says uh, Phillips should try and take a penalty Phillips mm. I'll tell you what his set pieces have come on leaps and bounds really yeah um, three kicks corners that sort of thing um, he's got to stick with click haven't you really now he's sort well, of like, it seems like if you've gone from Bamford to Hernandez to click it doesn't sound like you're going to stick with him does it to yeah, be fair, maybe to be fair I, I when I was doing the 18s at Leeds Calvin was came through you know he was in my, my youth team then and Calvin's a real good uh, but ball striker, dead yeah. ball striker. So I wouldn't have an issue with him taking him. I, yeah. I wouldn't have thought that'd be a bad idea at all, yeah. to be honest. But it's like you sort of spoke about yourself. Personally. It's the mentality thing as well. Yeah, isn't it? Whether, that. whether you know, on a training ground or or a free kick forty yards out, there's not a lot of pressure really, is it? Nah. But when you're stood on that penalty spot, yeah. Christ, I, I'd I'd go to pieces personally. Yeah, if well, I had snap. To, you know. I used to be like that down at park with my pals, let alone in let front alone of 30,000 yeah, people exactly. with, um, with a, a championship Squeaky division. Squeaky bum time. You're not wrong. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, no, but I agree, Calvin, with, with the, the person commenting. Yeah. Calvin's um, he's, he's a very good striker of the ball. Rich said it there when, when he used to work with him as a youngster. Very good. So, if his head's there, why not? Uh, Caleb says, uh, and he agrees you, Rich, actually, he'd like to see Bamford on pen. Uh, might boost it, boost his confidence, maybe. Yeah. Uh, which uh, which could do it. Um, uh, because it, yeah, he's still we're well, still getting a lot of flat. There's still a lot of Bamford bashing out there. Um, but I, st- I still think he still has it. I, I I understand it because he's just not sticking the ball in the back of the net at the moment. He's doing everything but. Well, for me, forms temporary class is permanent, and I, and I honestly do think he's a very good player. Yeah, yeah. I do think he's a good player. No, of course he's not going to be in Man City squad or Liverpool squad or like that. But I think for championship level, he's a good player, and and he's 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 worked clearly worked hard on his all on his all round game. So. Um, It'll come. It will come. It's just let's just hope it doesn't come. Let's hope it comes sooner rather than later. Yeah. That's 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 my big point. Because I heard, I did hear people and I say, oh, we need a striker. We need a striker. Now I'm not sure we do. Look, we've got Eddie and Ketia, but I think he's a bit young to put all the pressure on his shoulders to just throw yeah, him. Yeah, I throw think him so. In the same, he's, more in him. he's not a proven goal scorer in the championship, is, is he? Eddie? No. I mean, he's, he's, he's no. his first season, first sort of taste of it, really. Yeah. So it, time will tell how yeah. much of an impact. And I think using him from the bench is probably the right thing to do as the season progresses then you start giving him more minutes but I think like you say Bamford's probably one of the best strikers in the championship and if you if you wanted to replace him 
you would be paying a fair bit of money to yeah. get someone who can score mm. his sort of goals in the championship and his general hold up play and his all round play has been good so it's going to cost you a lot of money mm. I don't think we're in that sort of position at the moment where no. they want to spend that sort of money no. yeah. yeah exactly mm. um, Lowe's coming in uh, Steve says uh, Calvin said it's the first time he's ever seen Klitsch miss a penalty really yeah. it takes some for Poland I think or has taken yeah. some for Poland so he's obviously he's a, he's a world yeah. class player yeah. so yeah he's a yeah, very exactly. good player so <laughs> just one of them things I mean I must admit when he did that penalty against Barnsley very similar sort of that nonchalant side foot tapping <laughs> I I like buzzing that it went in obviously but yeah. then I thought you know what if keeper goes if keeper goes anywhere near that he's saving it whereas if you put a you know, put put a bit of power on it. Keep can go the right way and still not save it. Yeah, that's my only criticism of penalties like that. But, but he's, isn't he waiting for the keeper to go? Before I think that's so I think that's his style, and he, yeah. he he waits for the keeper to move before he does it, yeah. which is by all accounts quite a, an hard skill in itself yes. to be able to do that. <laughs> it is, yeah. So so yeah, that's that's the thing. So our we'll bro- see. Our when, brother when from get... another mother, Gary Devonport. Uh, before Saturday, Klitsch twenty one pens, twenty one scored. Really. Before, wow, before what a start. Saturday, wow. which is actually a pretty good start. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, My the, God, there were a hoodoo curse over Leeds United on Ellen Road that day, weren't they? Didn't uh, talking shut say uh, like on last week's yeah, show? Yeah, they did. They, they, he needs they've to take it. all the penalties. Yeah, they've cursed it. I'm not blaming talking shut, but we are really. <laughs> yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe not. Uh, let's find out some more of the fans' views of uh, what the uh, uh, they thought after that game against Derby over the weekend. <laughs> As ever, Ryan puts out a tweet on social media to find out uh, your thoughts after the result. And uh, I would imagine, as ever, you've got quite a few tweets about the week. As ever, quite a lot. And a lot of them colourful this week. Oh, uh, really? Which I've had to carefully edit some of them. Um, but yeah, so Andrew Grant says, um, first half we were brilliant. Second half we just seemed to back off and let Derby attack us disappointing in the end. Paul Tuck says, Struggle when, struggled when Bramford went off. And to be honest, change in the back four when we were 1-0 up and cruising seems a bit strange to me. Aidan Buckle says, Bamford had a fantastic game. I love everything he does for the team. His work rate, his movement, bullying the defenders and bringing others into play. But these chances can't keep going begging. We should we should have had the uh, the game dead and buried at half time. Yeah, that's true. Um, Steve Jonathan says, when you dominate a game as much as that, yet you can't convert your chances. Questions have to be asked about your strikers. So, so there's a couple of them so almost contradicting each other, but that's the whole th- the whole theme of the whole fans view yeah. this week. And thank you for everybody that contributes. We do put it out on Facebook, um, Instagram, and Twitter now. Um, so that was a mixture of all all three platforms and. We had a massive response as usual, so thank you very much. But the reason I picked some of them is because some of the some of the views did contradict each other, and, and that's the beauty of being a fan. It's your thoughts, it's your your views, your opinions. Everybody's got a view, everybody's got an opinion. And you know, Aiden says he's loving Bamford's game, but obviously not quite. You know, getting the goals, which is disappointing. And then Steve, obviously, saying you need to be questioning the strikers. So it's an hard one to call for me because. I think Bamford did everything right but score. But then you look on the flip side, strikers are there to score. So, you know. You'd prefer him to be playing badly and keep scoring, wouldn't you? To be fair, yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. playing well. Scuffing them in. Yeah, exactly yeah. right. Yeah, miss kicking stuff left, right, yeah. centre, but, but getting the odd tapping. So, yeah, it's a difficult one. He's playing well, but the, the ball's not hitting the back of the net for him. But, you know, if, if you keep playing well, eventually you'd think that'd turn around for him. Yeah. Uh, it's time to find out about uh, one of our uh, sponsors, which is, of course, the Social Maze. Uh, we all work in organisations that advertise with an uh, overall aim of winning new business. The Social Maze has helped a long number of organisations to generate new business, providing outstanding customer service and increase brand awareness with an effective social media strategy. We all need one of them. <laughs> yeah, we well, do. you're very good at social media, so Thanks. you know you know what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> if your place of work is not active on social media, why the hell not? Uh, social media is one of the most powerful marketing tools at your employer's disposal. Many of us spend a significant amount of time browsing content on our mobile devices. Do you, on Apple now, mm-hmm. it tells you, it gives you a weekly report 
of how long like you've been on your phone for. Yeah, that's not good, is it? It's, you don't want to be reminded. It's disappointing. No, it's yeah. when it goes yeah. and it says uh, on an average of like an hour and a half a day. That's up twenty minutes on last week. And oh, you're like, right. so it's what yeah. the hell have I been doing this week? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's a bit off putting. I've right. got to be honest with you. Um, we do spend a lot of time browsing content, as we say, on the toilet mainly. Uh, the social maze uh, work with all kinds of businesses, and they would like to help those who may not have the time. Re- resource, knowledge uh, to effectively use social media to its full potential. So if you want to get involved with social media, you've got no clue about it, then take a look at their website, which is uh, thesocialmaze.co.uk or email them info at thesocialmaze.co.uk to find out more information. Your midweek fix of Leeds United, it's LS11. LS11 with Ryan and Darren. Uh, thanks very much uh, for downloading and also for watching live. We'll get uh, all through loads of your questions on YouTube and on uh, Facebook as well a little bit later on. But uh, Richard Naylor's with us uh, in the studio. I suppose we had to start is, is like how your move to Leeds United all sort of first came about. Um, I was playing at Ipswich. I moved to Ipswich when I was seven. I'm from Leeds, but I moved to Ipswich when I was 17. I got scouted by... Sonny Squeeney, who was working for Ipswich, uh, obviously works for Leeds now, and he, he was the one who scouted Calvin, uh, and that was oh, one, right. of, one of the right. first things when I took over the 18s job was get Sonny back scouting for Leeds. So Sonny then you know picked up Calvin pretty much straight away. So I'll take some credit for it's that. Sir, it's, it's, uh, it's but yes, a good job. yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, could say that. Yeah. But yeah, he, he took me down. Uh, he was a scout for Ipswich at the time. Took me down to uh, Ipswich, and then played there for pff, nigh on. Th- 15 years and then just fell out of favour new manager Jim McGill had taken over had been a player um, and wasn't really playing me and you know just pulled me in the office one day and said look Leeds want to take you on loan if you fancy it uh, and he obviously knew that I was a big Leeds fan and that was my hometown so <laughs> my wife thinks that I paid paid someone somehow to get back <laughs> up here because obviously now I've retired and I'm, we've stayed in Leeds I've moved all the family up and we're back yeah. my hometown so it worked out pretty well for me as a, as a career has gone it was a masterful yeah, it plan. was a master <laughs> stroke 32 moved back home so yeah but she thinks uh, yeah she thinks it was all a cunning plan but no it was uh, Grayson I think had just taken over at Leeds and uh, yeah got, got me back up in loan and it was a bit weird, actually. Mate, I think the first game was Brighton away. Uh, I can't, don't know if you remember Fab Delph picked up at the halfway line and scored uh, Brighton away mm-hmm. uh, before they had the, the nice new stadium. Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah. a running track round. It was uh, rubbish. But that was my first game. But in the dressing room before the game, like handed me the, the armband, and I was like, never seen anyone go on loan somewhere and be given the armband. That's a bit it strange. Really especially, no, normally. especially when I'm just there for a month. So you know, obviously, you know. Must have felt hi- or you know felt highly of me and and thought that I could do the job and uh, yeah it was after a few weeks he said like like sign your permanent so it was a well, no no brainer for me so that's how it came about and you know really pleased with how it did. So moving to Ipswich as a seventeen year old how was that? It must have been a bit daunting because. Ipswich down in Suffolk. Yeah, it's, it's the middle of nowhere, really. Yeah, it it's is, a bit yeah. of a pig's ear to get down there when you're it driving is, yeah, by it, car. Yeah, it's a long way. Yeah. yeah, so my missus keeps reminding me <laughs> when we're supposed to be going back there to see your family. <laughs> oh, uh, dear. Yeah, it is a long way away. And yeah, it was just one of them things. I'd been scouted. I'd playing for Leeds City Boys. We'd won the, the English schools, which is the first time Leeds City Boys had done it at the time. So we had quite a few good players in that side. Um, and we'd been, you know, scouted by several clubs. You know, Sheffield United, obviously, a lot of the boys were in at Leeds. I was in at Leeds with the School of Excellence stuff back then. Yeah. Uh, but I went to Ipswich. Uh, he drove me down, did Sonny, with a couple of other lads from Leeds City Boys, uh, Cy Portry, who I think yeah. he was Cy, uh, from my village. Rothwell yeah, lad, yeah. yeah. So we went down and, mm. yeah, really good. John Lyle was the manager, who was an ex West Ham, really big Cockney fella. But First team manager got us in the dressing room, in the, in the the office and was chatting to us. It was like when we were like 13, 14 year olds, it was like it's unbelievable. What, you know, you don't get anything like that anywhere else. And it was a real family club. You know, took me mum and dad down, put me up in a hotel, and you're just like, wow, they really go on the extra mile here to sign mm-hmm. me. So if someone does that, you sort of, yeah, you, you sort of go with it really. And, yeah. and at the time, and, and I worry, you know, it's got some sort of relation what's going on at the moment with Leeds. Leeds were signing a lot of players for the youth team and for the sort of, you know, young pros from, from Ireland and giving them a lot of decent money. And then all the lads from Leeds were like a little bit of an afterthought. Oh, you're going to sign for Leeds because you're from Leeds. And it wasn't right. really happening. It wasn't really 
a good relationship and I, I see some parallels now with what's happening they're saying a lot of players and everybody thinks it's great but I want to see them get lads from Leeds in the first team yeah. and I know they're thinking of moving to back down to near Ellen Road and yeah. hopefully that will help that and facilitate yeah. that but yeah. yeah back then when I was there it just just wasn't you know it wasn't for me and I was a Leeds fan I'd, I'd, I'd gone to Ellen Road a bits and pieces with my dad and stuff but um, no Ipswich was you know made me feel really welcome and I can't really knock my career I had I stayed there for 15 years had a testimonial and a real good time played in the Premier League played in UEFA Cup with uh, with Ipswich, you know, played at the San Siro, so I had a real good, wow, good, yeah. good time, and my career, you know, I eventually got back to Leeds, and you know, we, Simon Grayson signed me and asked me to help him get get us out of League One because they'd been bumming around in League One <laughs> for a couple of seasons, and it was yeah. they were finding it difficult, and it, and it was difficult, uh, but managed to, you know, that season we missed out. Lost to Millwall, didn't we, in the playoffs? Mm -hmm. That, that. Yeah. So I only arrived sort of back end of that. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then the following season, we went up uh, second place, just behind yeah. Norwich, was it? Just yeah. behind Norwich. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Norwich finished yeah. first, yeah, Leeds, then uh, Millwall yeah, third. third. So yeah, we, we achieved what I was asked to do and, and set out to do, and you know, feel feel some sort of you know satisfaction with that. So when Leeds United come calling, were you? Were you like as a Leeds fan? Were you buzzing? Were you thinking, oh, oh get massively, in. yeah, and, yeah. And and what did you think when you turned up at Leeds? Obviously, you know, only five six years before that, Leeds were a top yeah, Premier yeah. League team. Well, you know? yeah, well, I, so, I used to drive back from Ipswich yeah. to watch the Champions League because obviously our games clashed Saturday games and Tuesday yeah. games, but the Champions Leagues obviously didn't clash. Cause so I used to come back up for the Champions League games. Mm. So you know, obviously, I'd seen all that and massive fall from grace where you're just going god what's happening to the club yeah. you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's it looks awful uh so but when they came calling you'd like to think you'd just jump at the chance but when you've got a wife who's lived he was down there you've got kids in school it's not as easy as just imagine. going all right right we're going up to to leeds now do you know what yeah. i mean so there's a bit more to it than that obviously i was keen but trying to just keep it on a bit of an even keel yeah. so the missus didn't think I was just, you know, <laughs> jumping ship sort of thing. So, yeah, it was a massive buzz and, you know, it was dif difficult going into the dressing room to to a certain degree because of, you sort of know that they're not doing that well and you want it you want it to be right because it's your mm. own club and you want it to be better and you want people to do better and you want to win games. So it was a little bit more pressure on me, if anything, and I sort of, you know, felt that pressure to, to, to perform and to get everyone performing. So mm. I felt quite a bit of pressure coming back with it being your hometown club and, you know, your mates are there, your mates are all Leeds fans and this, that and the other. So yeah. it was a bit more pressure, to be honest, than, than what I'd had previously. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine it would have been. Yeah. Uh, I, I got, there is a question, uh, this is just popping back to Ipswich as well, uh, from Gary. He says, is it true Richard used to sing Marching On Together in the Ipswich changing room? Uh, yeah, I think. I, yeah, I think. Yeah, yes, I, I, have to, I have to admit that. I think. I think. I, you know, when you're in induction on your first Christmas do with the first team, you have to sing a song and stuff like that. I think. That's I, what you that, say. Yeah, that's, that's, song, yeah. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. Oh, I love no. that story. Yeah. That's, that's super. Amazing. And I got to sing it on Ellen Road. Then after the the playoff game, I got handed the mic. Uh, no, the the last game of the season, Bristol. Uh, Bristol, yeah. Bristol started singing it. So yeah, oh, so. fantastic. I'm not going to. I'm not going to break into a rendition now. <laughs> 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 um, so uh, d take us through. Obviously, uh, you know you were here for like only for a few weeks, and then they they, they signed you uh, permanently. You could obviously see. I mean, there were some uh, interesting players around at that time as well, and it was a, a real fight to try and get out of that League One. Wasn't yeah, it? it was tough. I mean, the, the two centre half who I sort of came in alongside or to replace was Rui Marquez and Lubo Mikulic. Lubo yeah. Yeah. Mikulic. Yeah. Yeah. Mikulic. And yeah. to be honest, they were both really nice guys, but they were almost scared to play at Ellen Road. There right. was that, right. that pressure, they couldn't really deal with it. So I was slightly more senior and, you know, I, it was sort of my job to try and, you know, get the best out of them really, but they were really struggling with it. So, uh, but we had a lot of good young players. I think uh, Ben Parker, who you've had on here, uh, Johnny House and, Snodgrass had, had signed from Scotland, but he was only young. Bradley Johnson had signed, who was only young. Do you know what I mean? We had a, quite a lot mm. of good young players in and around it, but they just needed someone to pull it together. And, I, you know, I think that's why he signed me as a bit more of a senior player, experienced in the, played a lot of games in the championship and to pull it all together, really. And equally, I had a few that were in and about it who weren't in the team. And Ken Bates was a big one. He didn't want to pay appearance money. So 
you'd, you'd <laughs> say, right, this is my wage, this is my appearance money. So I don't pay it appearance money. So you just go, well, this is my wage then. You just add it to it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So there's no incentive to play. So there's a lot of players there who had been signed from lower league or were on probably the best money they'd ever been on and didn't had no incentive to play and it wasn't a great really strange it yeah. Does, it? That, yeah I imagine there's a, there's a hunger to play f- for a financial yeah. benefit as well as it, yeah as exactly. well, as well as it's a job at the end of the day yeah. you know whether you like it or you know the players are, are doing it they love playing football don't get yeah. me wrong but yeah. there's like you say and if the manager doesn't really fancy it or whatever and what's what's the you know the real desire to get yourself back in a team and there was just a bit of a not a great dressing room I want to said when I first arrived but I think Grayson sort of sorted that out over time and, and we eventually got the nucleus of a good team and you know, obviously did well in the end. You yeah, did do very well didn't in the do end. too bad, did it really? And there's one particular game that stands out amongst a lot of Leeds fans, well two in that era, uh, with, with the Bristol um, Rovers one which we'll speak about in a second, but going over to Old Trafford yeah. and actually getting a result, yeah. no disrespect, but we were a League One team, yeah, yeah. doing well in League One at the time, of course, but you know, you're talking Man United, and they were good then. Fergie was still there. Yeah, you know, really? they, they, Fergie never yeah. lost to a lower league club in the in the cup, had he? I don't no, think that was. We, no, we, we no, broke right, right, that yeah. duck for him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, unbelievable! Because <laughs> obviously, with it being a cup game as well, so you get a bigger allocation of tickets. Because yeah. obviously, like Leeds want to take loads everywhere. We, we were always fill out, but you can't actually get that many tickets a lot of the time. But because mm. it was FA Cup, you get a real big quota. So yeah. we were like behind the goal, massive we had, we had numbers. Loads. Yeah, it was yeah unbelievable. Nobody expects anything and. When you see the team sheet, you're thinking, "Oh, he might leave a few out, so it might be, it might not be too bad, you know." But Berbatov, Rooney up top, yeah. and you're thinking, "Oh, great!" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was, so, but, yeah. So what were you like when you saw Rooney on the team sheet and, you, and, and Berbatov? You're thinking, you got, got a, I've, I've got, got a mark there. Yeah, slightly worried. Well, you are just worried. You just, yeah. I mean, you're not really thinking of winning the game. You're thinking, "I don't want to get embarrassed here," because with the best will in the world, you've seen Watford earlier. You know, last week getting beat seven or eight by, yeah. Yeah, yeah, by, City, by, yeah. by City. You don't want you don't want something like that on your record, and especially Leeds Man United. Because yeah. I remember going to one of the games. They played them like three times in a row, didn't they? Remember that era when Leeds Man United were yeah. having loads of games. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. You know, the rivalry is massive, and it mm. always has been. So. Just didn't want to get embarrassed, really. Do you mm. know what I mean? Just come come out with your head held high. But you know, fortunately, we managed to do slightly better than that. And you know, <laughs> Bet's got a decent goal. And yeah, I've got got happy memories. What what were the vibe in the dressing room before the game? You know, when you're all all kitted up and you're about to walk out, is it a nervous feeling at that at that point? I know it's not a cup final, but arguably it'd be the biggest game that a lot of them players would have played mm, yeah. even even to, to today when yeah. a lot of them maybe yeah, retired yeah, but yeah, you know yeah. it's probably well, we spoke off air it's probably only people like Robert Snodgrass who's gone on to be a consistent Premier League player yeah, 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 Johnny yeah. Alston's done it in the Premier League yeah. for, a, for a period of time and, but what were the vibe in the dressing room before it, going out can you remember yeah I mean you, you try and approach every, and I know it's a cliche you try and approach every game the same whether you're playing against a you know a non-league side in a cup game or, or a Premier League so you try and approach it always the mm-hmm. same and if, you, if you're too high or you know it will affect you so the, the dressing room didn't feel much different there was just a little bit more slightly quieter than what you normally have yeah. you know a little bit more apprehension about but it wasn't massively different you know you wouldn't say oh everything changed for that one yeah. particular game it was fairly similar dress room the messages from the staff were the same we'd, we'd got a real settled side so you know there wasn't massive changes to, to, to the way we approached mm. it or anything it was just you know stay in the game and then do what we've been doing but he, the one thing I have to say about uh, Simon Grayson he, he wanted us to go there and, and perform and, and do what we'd been doing previously and that was attack teams and you know I think Beckford and Becky or both started, so we went with two up front, yeah. and you know we, we didn't play five in midfield, didn't get all get behind the ball. We just wanted to go and play how we, which you know could have bite bite us on the ass if we, yeah. you know, but it didn't fortunately. So it was a brave move by him to just send us out and, and play how you have been playing all season, and you know he had confidence in us to do that, and you know it worked out well in the end. I thought I thought they all played brilliant. I think mm. everybody up the game. I mean, where it, is it Jason Crow? The yeah, right back. He, he, he played, played well off the line, didn't he? Just? Yeah, yeah, he had a fantastic game, and he for me were a bit of a hit and miss player in that period, in my opinion. But yeah. he were he had a game of his life that yeah. that particular day. Yeah, he did. Um, but it's quite funny you mentioned Grayson there. We've had Grayson on the show, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. And Grayson, I'm not kidding you. When we asked him the type of players that he want, we we said to him, "What sort of players do you want in your team?" And he says to me, "I want players who." Will 
do everything for the shirt, they'll put the bodies on the line. And he actually referenced you and Paddy Kiznobo. He said, them two players are the type of players I want in my team. No, that's nice. Which is obviously a nice comment. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, um, yeah it is. and it means a lot. And, and we saw that as Leeds fans. And, and you know, Paddy Kiznobo, like, I can't remember which game it was, where he had Ed Band on his blood everywhere and stuff. And yeah, just Teddy looked like Butcher. a right war hero. Like, you know? to, to be fair, yeah, he used to wear that headband for weeks after he didn't need it <laughs> because it was like a lucky charm. So I've cut my eye in a game I'd need about six stitched headband on yeah you had the Terry Butcher look for a while I remember that but the next game I was like Paddy you're going to wear your headband because we'll look like dicks both (laughs) have it with two headbones on (laughs) and he was like well I've got to wear it look I said you don't need to wear it you know what I mean I've got stitches like literally on my eye I need to wear it and he's like he said no I'm wearing it so well well, I'm not going to wear it because I don't want us to look daft so I didn't wear it within the first Five minutes. I've headed a ball. All the stitches oh, have all the stitches no. have po- popped. So I had to get strapped up, big headband on. So yeah, it was. Yeah, but yeah he just wore it for luck after a, a couple of weeks. Yeah, he's, he's a strange character with Paddy, but a great lad, great lad. How did he get on with Paddy as a centre half partner? Because you yeah. two were. It was, big, it was, it was unfortunate <laughs> we didn't get to play. I mean, we, we, pl- we had a period together, and, yeah. and that was probably the most successful period during that time where me and him were together, and we were, mm. you know, just felt really comfortable together. Both, uh, you know, bounced off each other really well. Uh, different characters, but he was sort of a lively, bubbly sort of outgoing Australian, you know, a bit more dour Yorkshireman. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we, we got on really well, and it was probably the most successful sort of partnership I had when I was at Leeds. And, it was just unfortunate with injuries for, for both of us, really, that we mm. didn't play more together. Yeah. Um, what's, what was uh, Grayson like uh, as a manager? For, from all the people that you've, you've worked under a number of different managers, what, yeah. what was he like? In he, he, was, he was good. He wasn't complicated in you know his style of play and stuff like that. We obviously we had Luciano up top with, with Bex off it. We were fairly direct. We played with wingers all the time. So he... He's a simple game, you know, yeah. no, nothing complicated about it, but he was good to play for and he was very loyal and, and speaking off air about it, how loyal he was to, to keep picking players even when they weren't performing and he probably did that with me, um, but he definitely did it with, with Bex in that, that season we got promoted. Uh, but he was a loyal manager and, and people like that, you know, you like that loyalty, you know, you like, and you repay that and you, you run through brick walls for people who are loyal to you, won't you? So, yeah, he inspired that in players, but but nothing complicated in what he did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can imagine uh, him being like that. Um, what were, is, is that Man United win? Is that is that your best moment? Do you think in a Leeds well, United I, shirt? In a Leeds United shirt, yeah. Sorry, I was going to uh, comment on other stuff, but yeah, in a Leeds United shirt, probably that 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 single moment. But also the relief I felt after the Bristol goal. I know I was injured for the Bristol game, the last mm-hmm. game of the season, but um, the relief after that was. For me, it was massive. Do you know what I mean? I'd been brought up. And that was my one mission. I felt the pressure of getting the dressing room together and, and you know, turning us into a side that could compete in the league and win yeah. games. And and it's difficult in League One. And it, you know, everywhere you go, it's a cup final. It's the only time they'll sell out all season. They'll fill the ground up. All their play- I mean, the number of times we play games and the lads are going, the lads you're playing against are going down with cramp. You know, halfway through the season, because they've run themselves more than they've run in any other game yeah, previously. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's what you're up against. And yeah. uh, we didn't spend a lot of money to get out of the league. We didn't, you know, have the best, you know, biggest budget or by any stretch, yeah. really. So when you're playing in cup finals every week, it's physically and mentally really challenging. And you know, it wasn't easy. But so the relief when we got we got up was, you know, massive for me, especially. Wow. Yeah. Wow. No. It was. I mean, that was a. The game itself was like. Mental. No, ridiculous, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. As yeah. the captain that season, um, were, you, were you allowed to go in the dressing room before that game, even yeah, though you were yeah. injured? Did, did, yeah. did you give them pep talks? Did you, yeah, like, definitely, I, yeah. And uh, you know, Because Jermaine got picked to be the captain in yeah, that game. Did, yeah. And like we were talking off air, a lot of people say a bit of a master shot by, by um, Grayson because Bedford were, were in, a, in a real lull at that point of time. You know, he wasn't scoring very well. He wasn't even playing particularly very well. Leading up to that, but it lifted his game 150 percent, and he, he had game of his life really, and obviously got the, the winning goal. What got Leeds United out of that league? But yeah, uh, like you say, it wasn't it was a massive stroke really, and you know, good bit of man management because since sort of Christmas time when Beck signed his pre contract with Everton, which we didn't really know about, we'd heard rumours he was out of contract, and yeah, you, when you get to January, you can sign a pre contract, can't you? So you mm. guaranteed your money, and you know it, that. 
was playing on the back of his mind. It must be because he must be thinking, I don't want to get injured or whatever whatever was going through his mind. I don't know, but he definitely he dropped his game by 10 or 15 percent. And we were talking about Simon Grayson's loyalty. He stuck with Bex for a long time when he wasn't playing well, and eventually he did drop him and he put Max Grade up top. And it was you know it, it helped trigger a bit of a renaissance, but. Yeah, he stuck with Bex when really he shouldn't have been playing for a long time. But if you look back at any reviews of that season, you know, on the, the DVDs and the stuff that they do, it's it's very much the Bex's season. You know, he, mm -hmm. he got us out of that league, which is fine. And strikers do get them plaudits, which, you know, they deserve because it's the hardest thing in the world, putting a ball in the back of the net. Uh, but actually, he could have really just, you know, knocked it off the rails with, mm -hmm. you know, with him, with him signing for Everton and, and it not just quite performing. Yeah, yeah, being distracted. Mm -hmm. And it's, listen, I'm, it's not his fault. It, it's just a mental thing. If, yeah, yeah. if there's something in the back of your mind, it, it affects your game. And yeah. he, he wasn't deliberately doing it. It just, it just wasn't mm -hmm. happening for him. Yeah. A striker is quite hard to deal with. When you're when you're like a, a defender, do you sort of like look at striker? Well, actually, I was actually a striker when my when I started Ipswich. Well, uh, yeah, I played. Uh, I was centre half for a bit, and then George Burley saw me play up front for the in the youth team, and and I played for about four four seasons as a striker. I was coming on a sub a lot, you know, as a young kid yeah. coming on a sub for Ipswich. But yeah, I scored I scored not many goals. Found it difficult. But <laughs> I, I was a striker who would run around and put themselves about. And I, I was the, when we played in the Premier League as a striker. And that season that Marcus Stewart scored oh. 30 goals in the Premier League was yeah. top English striker. Yeah. So I, I played a lot of them games up, up front with him. And got about three, but, <laughs> but, but about twenty-seven assists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Down. yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 I shared his down. golden boot yeah. with him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve on the Facebook, uh, just going back to the Bristol Rovers game, he says, "What was said at half time, being one nil down, down to ten men." It, listen, if I I can remember that, I, yeah, I can I did go down to the dressing room. I think. Paddy wasn't playing either, was he? Because me and Paddy yeah, both no, went down, no, and we were Paddy in about in and about the dressing rooms. I can't remember. I don't. Rem I don't remember very much about my career, if I'm honest, and, and th <laughs> things like that. I would. I would definitely. I thought headed too. Headed too many football. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I should be part of that study, Alan Shearer did, you know. But yeah. um, no, I can't, I can't remember. There was uh, nothing. There's, you know. Grayson wasn't one for big Churchillian speeches. I played under Joe Royal, and he was really good when he spoke. It was like a real good orator, yeah. you know, like proper, could, you know, big speeches and that, and you go, wow, do you know what I mean? Hairs on the back of your neck. Simon wasn't that kind of manager, and, and Snoddy and Dusty were with him as well, weren't mm -hmm. really that kind. But, the, you know, they, they just got everyone together, and we'd been mm -hmm. through stuff that season. And when, yeah. you, when you do have them experiences together, it makes you stronger as a unit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the relief after the game, can you can you remember much of that? Did you go into the dressing room? I bet it were chaos in there, weren't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, just chaos. Just yeah. yeah. But for me, just just relief. Like I spoke about earlier, like yeah. you, you you celebrate and you, but you really it's just massive relief. Were you gutted to miss that game with injury? Yeah, a little bit, but ultimately I was always and I spoke earlier about me being a sub for Ipswich for quite a lot when I was a striker I'm, I'm happy to contribute for the side whatever yeah. I can do whether it's in the dressing yeah. room whether it's on the pitch however I can contribute and I felt like I contributed that season and, and, and played a part in it so I wasn't one for I don't want to be the one scoring the winning goal. I'm happy to be, you know, in and around it yeah. and doing what I can do. And I know I'm never going to be that standout player who, who gets the plaudits. But you know what I bring to a side and to a, a club, I think is you know beneficial. And yeah. I mean, that's the way I looked at it. So I was gutted that I missed out, but not that good if I'm honest I'm, I'm, I'm happy you've got the won. current Leeds United ethos which is plastered all over Ellen Road which is side before yeah. side before self yes. which and is yes. plastered everywhere nowadays uh, and yeah. that's, that's you and to be fair when I was doing the 18s I asked Adam Underwood could we get them signs up so oh, right. that there was no signs of when when I was doing coaching the 18s yeah. but I said I wanted really? the signs in the yeah. the 18s dressing I think room. it's a Billy Bremner quote I think it is yeah so I mean and it's a brilliant quote and it's right you know nobody's yeah. bigger than the club and people like look I know I'm too young to watch Billy pl players you know and but he really gave yeah. it all for the shirt didn't he exactly. we're all about Leeds United and about the football club and um then than him, even though yeah. he's a fabulous player, so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a brilliant, and especially if you can instill that into young players, so it's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, and definitely. It's good that they've actually put it up. Yeah, it talking about uh, uh, fabulous players, uh, uh, Steve's asking uh, who did Richard most enjoy playing with as a player, and who was the most influential player he played with. Um, 
uh, the person I enjoyed playing with the most was a f- player called Jim Magilton who played a lot of games in Northern Magilton. Ireland yeah. and, and he's centre midfield at, a, at Ipswich so I was a centre half and literally you would I'd win the ball back and he would stand on my toes and demand me to give him the ball so <laughs> it was the easiest thing in the world playing with someone he just wanted the ball and if he didn't get the ball he'd scream at you you know and he was, he was a real big influence of, around that, that team and a, a real good player you know I can't fault him as a player he wasn't the most mobile but similar to Jan Moby and you know he'd get on the ball and make things happen and mm. yeah I really enjoyed playing with him uh, what was his, the other question sorry uh, uh, most influential most influential, really? most influential. <sighs> I'm not sure Sounds um, like sounds like him as well. Sounds like Jim Joe. Yeah, as well, yeah probably so. Yeah, his 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 ethos is about you know wanting to win and stuff. But yeah, you, you'd say your most influential people are your, your parents, aren't they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rather than actual people you played with and and them well, the that. discipline that they instill in yeah. you and that. So yeah, that the, probably the best player I played with probably Kieran Dyer. You know, uh, he was unbelievable because he, he came through Ipswich. Yeah. That's I, right. I was, yeah. I was, I was in the first team and he came through and. You know the ability of a seventeen, eighteen-year-old to go past players and yeah. run and play. He was, he was, he was unbelievable at that time. Yeah, yeah. superb. Wow. Um, bringing it up up to date. Yeah. Um, what are you, what are your thoughts on on Marcelo Bielsa and and that sort of the, the style and what he's done for Leeds United in this last sort of eighteen I think, months? Uh, I think he's uh, been a revelation. I think he's unbelievably what he does and what he brings uh, and the way he goes about it. I think it's fantastic. I th- obviously I've started on doing my coaching stuff and I coach at the moment and when you're on courses they always ask you what, what's your philosophy how do you want to play and you know when you're starting off you're thinking well how do I want to play and that but someone like him who's been there done it he's got the set way he wants to play and the way he articulates it to the players and they all know exactly what's expected and what they're doing I think it's you know it's fantastic and just shows what a top manager is and we're lucky to have him really for him to mm. come from he was at Argentina, wasn't he? He was yeah. in Argentina to yeah. come over and yeah. to, you know, de- he dedicated his life to Leeds for a year, two years, however long it is. But hopefully, he'll get the, re- you know, the rewards for it because I think, yeah, it's unbelievable what he does. I yeah. think you're right. I think a lot of Leeds fans would echo that. We, I feel you do feel lucky to have him. You know, you feel like there's he could be easily managing a team like, for example, Everton. You know, one of these. Yeah, yeah. Teams oh, you guarantee there has been some yeah. after last season. There would have been some Premier League teams sniffing, sniffing around. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. No you know, them them sort of t- them teams that are trying to fight towards Europe spots. Like, yeah. Obviously, maybe not so much your Man City's, Liverpool's, etc. But certainly the teams below in that uh, below that. And you know, you look. I know Frank Lampard's a Chelsea legend, but when you look at the management experience and compared to him to Bielsa you know obviously he's clearly gone to Chelsea because he yeah. knows the club and all that rubbish that everybody spouts off but yeah he does <laughs> and, and he's probably very influential Frank Lampard walking around the Chelsea training grounds probably more inspiring than maybe a lot of other managers walking around so I get that but as a manager um, you know Bielsa's he's just incredible like, blows my mind to be honest with you because look, you've been in football you've worked with a lot of managers a lot of coaches obviously I am, and um, you know, I, I, and I try to watch and analyze the best I can. But sometimes, the way he does it and the way he analyzes, it's it's mind blowing. You know, the 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 detail, attention to detail he goes in, it's incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, it yeah. is, and, and he does dedicate his life to it, doesn't he? He's yeah. literally at the training ground or in and about it constantly, seven yeah. days a week. You know, twenty four hours a day. So, yeah, uh, it's, it's, if you got that sort of level of dedication to a club, you you deserve yeah. some success. Yeah, exactly. certainly do. Um, l- looking at the the uh, Leeds United defence then uh, at the moment, um, this is an interesting point you put down on your notes here. I think uh, the departure of Pontus Janssen uh, and how that was all sort of uh, uh, handled, and then of course Ben White coming in. What 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 would have been your thoughts on that? I, I suppose it's a bit of a worry. Like ev- ev- all Leeds fans would have been worried seeing Pontus go because he'd, he'd been good for the team, but. I, I'm not sure he had the same ethos what we were talking about earlier. Mm. I think he, he liked to be the centre of attention, oh, yeah, 100%. which, which yeah. isn't always conducive to a good team because at the end of the day, it's a team game and it's yeah. a team sport and you need everyone pulling in the right direction. And, and if he didn't really fit in with that, then it's probably best for him and best for the club that, that he moved on and got decent money for him. And the lad that brought in Ben White, obviously leads his scouting network at the moment is very good. You know, they're the spotting players, young players from all over the country and, and the two lads have got in on loan and you spoke about Eddie but mm. I think uh, Ben Ben's been been excellent, hasn't yeah, he? He's, yeah. he's a Abs- you know a lot of clubs Abs- wanted to get him in, mm. and I think Leeds tried to sign him actually, but. 
but they, they held out and said, no, you can have him on loan because yeah, yeah. he, he could be the next big thing. So I think they've yeah. done well to get him. And yeah, uh, yeah he's been superb. I, I can't speak highly enough of him, really, yeah. as a young player stepping in the side. And to be fair, uh, Liam Cooper's, you know, He's probably he's probably made that bounds. yeah he's improved and he's probably made that transition for 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 Ben to, to step into the side easy having him alongside him someone a bit more experienced and like you say I think he's playing the best football of his career at the moment. I heard a stat today, Liam Cooper's I don't know the exact number because um, it was just uh, I heard it on the radio briefly as I was driving. It was Liam Cooper the so far seasons won seventy something percent of his defensive duels, which is the highest defender in the league. You know, stats wise. Wow. So, so his defensive jewels, he's won seventy something percent, which is incredible really, you know. Yeah, it is. But he's kind of for me, he's a bit like how you described you and yourself, really. He doesn't Coops don't seem to be centre of attention, even though he's a captain, doesn't want to be centre of attention, but he just does his job and he does it well. Yeah. And um, you know, he's he's doing a fantastic job and, and becoming a good leader as well yeah he is and, and I'm obviously I'm, I'm working at Hull at the minute and he's he's come through the, the academy at Hull did, uh, so you know they're, they're proud mm. of him and, and, and all people back in Hull th- you know think highly of him yeah oh good uh, well, if you've got more, any more questions uh, for Richard, uh, get them uh, coming up. In fact, we'll, we'll leave you on this one. Uh, Dean says, uh, "What does Richard think of our chances this season?" I think you go. I think we're going up. I think uh, without a shadow of a doubt, like everyone's down because we we lost or drew to Derby. Felt like a loss. <laughs> Felt like a loss. Yeah, a draw, yeah. A draw with Derby. Yeah. Everyone's down. But then you look yeah. at the league table and you go, "Well, there's not much to be down about because yeah. the way you still top, you know, the way we're playing and and." You know the the lads we've still got to come in. Uh, lads coming back fit, from, fitness, back from yeah. fitness. You know Tyler Roberts was excellent last year, mm. uh, and he hasn't features much. And uh, Forshaw's got to come back in now and yeah, stuff. So Forshaw, yeah. Erling. Yeah. So yeah, it's all our twenty three. So Hull, I did the game Hull twenty threes, Leeds twenty threes, and Luke Ailing played. To be fair, at the KCOM last week. So mm. yeah, yeah. He, he looked. He actually came off with tight hamstrings, but he he looked fine, and he, you know he's, he's back to it by the looks of it, things. Yeah. No, good. good. So Richard Neller thinks we're going up. There you go. <laughs> Done. There you go. We don't need, to, we don't need any more information. Put it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, this week's uh, Any News, Graham, is brought to you by The Terrace, uh, providing f- unique football merchandise uh, that connect fans to their favourite footballing moments. Inspired by retro kit culture, iconic legends. You can get your hands on anything from phone cases, beach towels, and, of course, the ever-famous kit mugs, which we are drinking out of this evening. <laughs> uh, the Terrace, more than just an order number. Yes, boom indeed, <laughs> boom indeed. Time for any news, Graham. Uh, it's the uh, highlight of the week, let's be fair. <laughs> but uh, apart from that, we've got Richard Naylor here, so that's the yeah. highlight, really. Yeah. Um, what's been happening in the news this week, then, Ryan? Throwing out more contracts. Again? Uh, some of the youngins, to be fair. Uh, okay. Charlie Cresswell, which mentions Charlie Cresswell, Richard Cresswell's son. And when, oh, right, yeah, when yeah. we had Andy Hughes on the show, Andy Hughes, who you obviously played with, yeah. Andy Hughes, when he was. Co- he, he, did he say he was with Leeds over the summer helping out coaching or whatever they do was, Be- he? while he were out of work yeah. he were up at Four Parch and he said he's going to be a class player he, he, he picked him out individually he said oh, Richard Cresswell's son Charlie going to be a brilliant player so anyway Leeds have offered him a contract extension so he's got a new brilliant. deal um, Stuart McKinstry Bryce Hosanna Pascal Stewart and Right, this is a funny one. Con Con Tem and Em I don't know how you pronounce it. Hey, I'm a bitch announcer at Bradford City. Let me know. Kun Temenikov. Temenikov. No, I would. Yeah, I would. Everybody knows who he is. He's been with us for a while. Yeah, Yeah, he's been with us for a while as as Kun. Let's call him Kun. And um, (laughs) careful, careful, careful. (laughs) My God. So it's so uh, some new deals to the to the youngins, um, yeah. which is obviously good to keep them and and to be honest with some of them, Pascal Stewart's been making waves, um, playing in defence and like I say Andy Hughes says Cresswell looks like a fantastic player. So you know it's it's good to see that we're rewarding them and also keeping them on our books really because you don't want them to be cherry picked by somebody else. No, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Um now this next piece of news uh the boiling is, piss award. <laughs> my god, this is just the gr- I, this is like the greatest thing I've ever seen. 
Uh, Leeds United, Marcelo Bielsa winning the FIFA Fair Play Award <laughs> for his actions in the game against Aston Villa last season. Yep. Uh, I think it was it you that then tweeted, uh, does he get a £200,000 uh, check? Uh, for that is the prize two hundred thousand. It, it wasn't me, but I saw that. Oh, I don't I know who did that. But I did think that was quite take funny. Credit for it. Take credit for it. I would take credit for it. Yeah, 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 with me. Yeah, good in that. Go. Well, good well, in that. Well done. <laughs> right, good in that. Um, what the hell? I, I mean, mean, out of the blue. <laughs> talk about that out of the blue, but I mean, it's absolutely <laughs> boiled piss amongst the Leeds hating <laughs> bastards. You know, everybody <laughs> where it's Leeds have just absolutely come out with oh, cheats, he spies, blah blah blah, and I think it's fantastic. You know, it's brilliant. Do you know what? Marcelo Bielsa is such an incredible character. He he allegedly gets paid two or three million pound uh, uh, at Leeds United. Well, well uh, I say allegedly, <laughs> but he, I, th- I think he gives two or three million pound to young uh, Newell's old boys in Argentina yeah. to develop a new training ground. He paid the two hundred thousand pound fine out of his own pocket, so he's not. He's no Neil Warnock. He's let's not put in it that profit. Way. Let's put it that way. After being so, <laughs> right, okay. so you know he's um, he's, he's not, lost money by he's, coming to Leeds. Well, is what potentially, you're to say. yeah, but or he's not made as much because he's throwing it into other things. But look, we know Bielsa's arguably as honest as a day is long. The spying thing is what it is. <laughs> they deal with that a lot in South America, apparently. So he, he's just another th- another uh, way of analysing the opposition. It wasn't. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a sly thing, particularly, but I just love it how it's absolutely cheesed off all the all the people who hate Leeds United. To be honest with you, I mean Derby County social media press have not shut the hell up about it. It's been incredible. I'm like, my God, calm down, Derby. You know, Derby trying to make like this big like rivalry between Leeds and Derby. Like, look, Saturday were Derby's Cup final for Leeds United. It was just another Saturday end of yeah. day. You know, just another game. Um, but incredible, the FIFA Fair Play Award goes to Marcelo Bielsa. He didn't go and collect it himself because he's not interested in all like that. He'll probably be watching seven games at once on his laptop, which he apparently is a skill he can do. Or he can at wa- Morrison's. He can watch two games at once, apparently. Or he was at Morrison's. Or he was at Morrison's doing in, his big uh, in Weatherby. Doing his big shot. <laughs> or Piccolino's in Collingham. Oh, Piccolino's he goes Piccolino's Collingham because I see him in there. Yeah. Really? Yeah, well, the chef's a Leeds fan, to be fair, so he gives me free garlic bread. That's the only reason I go, and it's too, yes. ex- too expensive otherwise. <laughs> I go for the free garlic bread and then go home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure BLS is not doing that, though. I'm no. sure. I no. think he'd probably get, he'd get he would get at least a free pizza. Well, Marcelo Bielsa, so, you would yeah. have thought. If so. the chef's a Leeds fan, it would be giving yeah. him three Argentinian Malbec wine and all sorts of <laughs> throwing it all at him, wasn't it? Um, uh, yeah, so Marcelo Bielsa winning that award, brilliant. which is Just great. The greatest news ever. Yeah. Um, and so, for sure, for mm. sure, he's, he's, he's still out, but apparently he's making good waves. He's back in training um, this week, and uh, pictures of him actually looking like he's doing some more. Like heavier training, what whatever you yeah. call it, Rich. Pro- yeah. Proper training. Return to play protocol, probably. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's why we get the professionals in, Darren. <laughs> That's nice. Um, I like that. And um, and I, I think personally, he's he's been fantastic for us. And and I, I think we maybe missed him a little bit on on Saturday against Derby in, in Middle Park. Um, Shackleton had a bit of a quiet game, but again, he's a young lad developing and going to be a real talent. Um, he was good against Barnes. He was Shackleton. He wasn't bad against Derby at all. But I think. For sure, sure, sure in that midfield up yeah. um, would have helped us a little bit, um, certainly towards the end of the game. That is, um, so I think, like you say, like uh, Shackleton did have a good game, then quite a game. It is hard in the Championship for young yeah. players to produce it week after week. Yeah. So dropping them in and, and pulling them out is the best thing. So that's when you need your big players to be fit, like, yeah. like for sure. And like you say, I think he, he was a bit of a miss uh, against Derby. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, and finally, well, we're just talking about uh, yeah. Luke Ayling, haven't we? But, uh, yeah. yeah, we could see him back pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, yeah. well, the, the image I saw today was of Luke Ayling and Forshaw doing some quite heavy training. So um, Luke Ayling could be back in the squad at any, any point soon, but I'm not sure he's going to get in over Dallas, so, to be honest with you. I think Stuart Dallas has been fantastic. So um, even if he is, I think he'll, even if he is fit, I think he'll make the squad, but I, I, I very much doubt he'll be back straight in the first team. Certainly not any time time soon, uh, unless Dallas has a, a, a knock or injury or, or really drops off form. I think Dallas has been superb. But that's, that's what you want. You want that competition, yeah. don't you? Yeah. You want them both fit and both vying yeah. for the one spot because that, yeah. that drives both of them on. So it's, yeah. it's ideal. Yeah. yeah, it certainly is. There we go. That is uh, any news, Graham, brought to you by The Terrace for this week.
Boom indeed, yes indeed. Uh, loads of comments uh, coming in. Uh, Richard Setter saying about the Derby game, same old Dominic, can't finish our chances. Same as last season. Uh, Seller Dweller says, I think Pablo should be benched for a few games because he's looked out of form uh, the last well, few, few games. a few people have said that. Of, but, you know, Pablo can really turn... He can, just a moment of magic from Pablo could turn a game. So yeah. you kind of can understand why he's how, not how old is Pablo now, though? 34, I think. Is, is he? he? Is he just turned 34? Spring chicken. Is it 33, 34. He's, yeah. he's, not, he's not young in, in no, football no. terms. No, true. Um, and, you know, but he's been a fantastic servant over the last couple of seasons. But I must admit, some of his short games being off... Um, Giving away possession a bit easy with some of his passing, but <laughs> like I just said, he can he can really just pull out a, a, a moment of magic and and turn a game. So um, yeah, I can understand what I can understand why he's one of the first names on the team sheet, but I can also understand why some people are saying maybe he's dropped and try try a different player like Costa or something. Adam says, get Kiko on pens. He, pr- he probably would have a pop kick. He seems, <laughs> he he seems so full of confidence. It's unbelievable. He's, t- he's too confident. <laughs> he's <Yeah>. insane. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of insane. Yeah. Alioski, Jenny Alioski. Alioski, Jenny Alioski. Alioski, Jenny Alioski. Yes, it's time for the Alioski files, all about. Our fine Macedonian friend, uh, Gianni Alioski. Yep. Uh, and uh, this is where we pick out something that's uh, maybe caught our eye in the world of football and the world of Leeds United and Gianni Alioski. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and maybe nominate something and then pick a winner uh, for something that's uh, just uh, maybe intrigued us uh, this week. Uh, Ryan, what are you going to go for? Uh, I'll, I'll admit, sorry the content's not amazing this week um, because nothing mental happened. But Alioski's always nominated for being Alioski. But... He actually is nominated for something else as well. Um, at the end of the game, obviously took a dislike to Richard Keogh, like all Leeds fans and, like mo- and yeah. probably everybody other than Derby <laughs> fans have. Um, and he squared up to him and sort of grabbed hold of him, but Alioski's about five foot something and <laughs> Richard Keogh's pretty tall and it just was quite a funny sight seeing little Alioski grabbing all the Richard Keogh. So um, that was quite a funny situation. I quite like that one. Um, and then I've actually just picked as well the game against Derby, just because, <laughs> not to keep harping on about it, but it just it was just a, a mental game how much we dominated a game and didn't win it. Um, so for me, that's one of the most bizarre things that's happened in football that last is week. Pretty bizarre. Uh, but, uh, who's the, the the maddest player you've ever played with, Richard? If you like, have you played with someone like Gianni Alioski, who's just a little bit? Couple of sandwiches short of a picnic. Um, I don't <laughs> think I have, if I'm honest. No, I think everyone's been all right. Obviously, Paddy, who we spoke about earlier, yeah. was slightly strange. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's just a normal thing with Australians, because there was uh, we had another Australian, Kilkenny, who played oh yes, yeah, Kilkenny, yeah, yeah. Who was and talking about grabbing people by the throat. I remember grabbing him by the throat in the dressing room at one point. So he was quite annoying Australian, <laughs> but no, yeah, I think... Quite annoying <laughs> Australian. <laughs> I'm not sure it's a trait with all Australians. <laughs> Tar them all with the same brush. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, I have got a nomination, yeah. uh, which is Mahmoud Gaddy, uh, who is an Egyptian goalkeeper uh, in goal for NP. Uh, who uh, you may have seen it's gone viral yep. on uh, social media over the last uh, uh, week. Um, made a strange decision to come out of his box, Kiko, Kiko Casilla like, yep. um, head the ball away. Unfortunately, ball was volleyed back towards the goal by an opposition player, but somehow. Facing his own goal, he was able to punch the ball over the bar, yeah. running back. Uh, it's athleticism, it's luck, uh, it's it's Alioski, yeah. uh, it's, it's Kiko, Kiko Kassir, Kassir. It's, it's everything it, in there, yeah. um, but it, it's quite unique, and if you've yeah. not seen it online, then it's well worth having a look at. It is for funny, it. that. That is really yeah. funny. It's insane. That's actually really, really impressive. He I shouldn't, he shouldn't have been that far off his line anyway. can't believe he, got, he, he, he has you got there. To recover that, yeah. uh, it's like I said off air, like something out of like a volleyball like match, you know, beach volleyball, just dived and 
managed to punch it over the bar. We're insane. <laughs> it was absolutely yeah. brilliant. Um, okay, so uh, we'll let uh, we'll let Richard choose uh, the winner. So you've got the derby game. You've got Jenny Alioski uh, fronting up to Keo, or you've got the Egyptian goalkeeper. Who would you vote for? I would go one? for the. I haven't seen it, but the Egyptian goalkeeper does yeah. sound like the, the best. I, I, of the I agree. I, think I it's agree. A good one. I don't I want to give derby, one. and Alioski's already had it about fifteen times. Already, <laughs> yeah, that's so. very true. Right. Um, so uh, well done, Mahmoud. Well uh, done, you've Mahmoud. won the, the, this week, and if you're listening, get in contact. <laughs> He's not, he's not listening. LS11 with Ryan Wilson and Darren Harper. Right, a uh, bit of uh, business to tie up with uh, the next couple of games, of course, uh, yeah. away at Charlton this weekend. Yeah, um, Lee Boyer. Um, oh, of course it is, isn't it? Former yeah. Leeds midfielder, box to box midfielder. Fant- played in a fantastic team, fantastic era, and actually doing really well for for Charlton. I don't know if you you know him on a personal level. No, I don't. He's yeah. not not. I played against him, I think, back in the day. But um, he's had a real good start to his managerial yeah. career down there. Mm. I think it's just starting to you know taper Wobbled off a little, a little bit now. Bit, yeah. and that'll be the the making of him because I think a lot of you know ex players go straight into management, have a real instant effect because they've got that respect to the dressing room about what he's done, and then after a while that wears off, and then it's right, what have you got now? And yeah. Mm, that, this is a time for him. I think now it's this. What have you got now? And you know, are your messages getting through? And, and how do the players respond? Yeah. And so they're having a bit of a sticky time. So it's probably a, a good time for us to play him, to be yeah, honest. So well, they, they had a good start. They've in the last six games, they've won two, drawn two, lost two. But it's two losses on the bounce. Yeah. So uh, oh, is it? Is yeah, it really? two losses on the bounce. So before that, they were they were up top yeah, of the league with right us with there. us uh, in Swansea. Um, but obviously they've tailed off with the two consecutive defeats. So let's hope Leeds can make it a third. Um, but yeah, they've they've got off to an all right start for a team that just got promoted. Obviously, they talk about that 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 bounce when you get promoted. You know that that you keep going <coughs> in with the momentum that you had yeah. previous season. And I get that, but like you said, it's, it it's does work. Uh, that wears off yeah. for the players mm-hmm. and for the, like we say with the manager, the the initial yeah. you know response you get yeah. it does wear off, and then it's you know don't know if he's doing the right things and if yeah. the, the boys are reacting. So I, th- I think it'd be a good good time to play him and I think mm. Leeds will, will win comfortably if I'm honest yeah got a player called nice. Loud Tails got five goals in the last six so obviously he's um, doing well he's one of their main threats but I can't see anything of their Leeds win if I'm being honest with you um, score prediction I don't know 2-0 Leeds 2-0 Richard we're good away from home I, th- I think 3-0 yeah I think 3-0 com- I think they'll win comfortably yeah I'll go. I'll go two one. Two one. <laughs> two one. Just to edge, just to be different. Two yep. one. Okay. Uh, so that's Charlton, and then of course yep. next Tuesday evening. Yep. Uh, at home, it's uh, West Brom. Yeah. Uh, fourth in the league, of course, West Brom. Yeah, West Brom. Obviously, uh, funny old season last season. Sacked the manager, didn't they? When they weren't doing too bad, and had some good players. Um, they've picked up a little bit of form recently, and yeah, got. got um, Got back up to to what, what fourth in the league up, up near the top with us. Uh, last six they've uh, won three and drawn three. They've actually not lost a game so far this season out of, out of the game. So okay. one of the only teams to to not do that. So I think they've got a, or they've yeah. had a lot of underperforming players because they held yeah. on to a lot of the Premier League players yeah, on big yeah. money and they've underperformed for whatever yeah. reason. And I don't even who's the manager at the minute. I'm not sure, but he's getting. So is it? Oh, I forgot. Do you know what? Yeah, so have I. Yeah, it, he's getting more of a response than yeah. than than what Darren Moore was because Darren yeah. Moore was the one who got sacked in. He? Yeah, he, they were doing all right, but for the, the Slaven le- Bilic, of yeah, Slaven yeah. Bilic, yeah, of course, of course it's course Slaven, it's, yeah. smoking yeah. Slaven. Yeah. So yeah, I think he's getting more of a reaction off him than what, yeah. than what they were getting last year, and they're, they're starting to perform a bit more like what what they should do, really. Yeah. But I still think there's more to come from him and. You know, I think they will be there or thereabouts I think the that, end of the season. I think they're going to gather more momentum as it goes on. You know, um, as we know, we're so early in the season. Mm. What this, what this, what the league table is going to look like in May is going to be completely different to what it's, it sits yeah, like well, now. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think they are one of the teams to watch for me because even though they did lose a couple of players, um, you know, obviously had Dwight Gale on loan was a fantastic player at his level. Yeah. For me, I feel like the so far from what I've seen of them, they, they missed that that goal scoring poaching striker like him but they've still got some good players that Matt Phillips he's, he's, he's a good player and he's a, he's a unit him he's strong fast good, very good player um, which another player I pointed out for them so um, that's going to be a tough game and it's at Ellen Road it's just so Leeds can 
turn the form around <laughs> at Ellen Road. That is, um, yeah, that's the issue, yeah. isn't it? Away from home, look so I, much I, I better. Think the, good, the good thing of a team like West Brom, you would expect them to come out and, um, and try and mm, play and try and win yeah. the game. You wouldn't expect them with the caliber of player and manager yeah. and you know the, the budget they've got. You would expect them to come out and try and attack Leeds yeah. and have a go. And which then we'll probably work into half, yeah, half exactly favor, right. Yeah. So I think yeah. it'd be, it should be a good game. To be fair, yeah, wouldn't yeah. Watch. yeah. Cracker. As, as we as we all know that the game against West Brom last season, which what was also a I think a Friday night game that one. It was, was that the one where he just scored really quickly? And Anders scored after 16 seconds. That's right, was, yeah. And we won 4-0, I think it was. Um, more of that, then. More of that, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, then. 4-0 for you. Are you uh, going? I don't know. 3-1. Three, 3-1. One. Three, one. Four goals, but I think we might leak one. Richard? Yeah, I think I think it'd be 2-1, something like that. I think, they'd two, like you say, they've got a chance of scoring, yeah. haven't they? Hmm. I'm going to go 2-2. Two, two. Boo! I'm going to go two-two at Desmond. <laughs> I'm going to go for a Desmond two-two. Uh, I just think I don't know. I don't know. I've got funny feeling. Funny feeling. Yeah. Um, uh, we've got to say a shout out as well uh, to uh, Connor and Ed, uh, who are doing the fans react videos uh, after home games. They'll be there on uh, Tuesday evening around the Billy Brand the statue yep. uh, to get your views. Um, uh, so there were some certainly some colourful metaphors being yes. used. Well, the uh, last, the <laughs> last, the last one, the last game against Derby which was the first time that LS11 have done the the, the fan reacts set, um, new feature which yeah. is uh, Connor and Ed two contributors to LS11 out filming and interviewing fans after the game oh, nice. fan and, TV uh, type thing fan really, type V type thing and um, they've, they've put it all together and, and the video is excellent so please go onto our YouTube channel and look at it and like and subscribe of course but Connor did say to me after he went um, there was some colourful language to, uh, were thrown at me when I first were <laughs> asking people um, Mainly and, directed at Patrick Bamford. I think seemed. one or two people got a bit aggressive oh as well. Said, "Look, yeah. well, we don't want you getting hurt. So just yeah. if, if people look like they might knack you, um, just Run. back off. Stick to yeah. women and children. Yeah. 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 yeah, just like go, go for quiet ones. Yeah, but um, <laughs> no, that that the the video they put together. And thank you very much to if any of the fans are listening that that actually contributed as well. Yeah, there was some good. some really good opinions. Actually, yeah, I it, think so. It wasn't yeah. necessary just people just." effing and jeffing and saying loads of crap it were uh, some actually quite well yeah, articul- really articulated ones, yeah. points of view and um it works very well so we will be that's uh, going to be a new feature to to the the fan channel and um yeah if you want to get involved the the guys will be around the billy bremner statue after the games brilliant stuff uh, mm. well that's it uh, for this week on LS11 uh, uh, just leaves me to say thank you so much Richard Naylor for yeah, coming thank in thank you Rich no problem at brilliant. all thanks for having me no, no absolute pleasure yeah. um, uh, we haven't scared you off you come back yeah, probably <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> on a hundred yeah. on a hundred fifty <laughs> on, and a hundred there we go fifty yeah. and a hundred fifty and a hundred it's for fish the centenary um, episode yeah. we're doing ten a week now though don't you you know that so, yeah, uh, yeah, so we'll see you in five few. weeks time <laughs> uh, so thanks very much to Richard thanks very much to everybody who commented on the podcast on the live stream of course make sure you like subscribe and uh, give us a five star review all that sort of gubbins Ryan thank you very much cheers Darren uh, cheers and uh, well, uh, we'll well, catch you one more thing oh, 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 oh. Oh. Uh, next week's guest is oh. Kev, Kev Sharp, former Leeds player. Oh yes, and now Calvin Phillips agent. So um, we'll be asking him about that dealings with the Calvin Phillips. And um, has he and done a deal? I didn't see that. Yeah, pretty good deal oh, as well. That's all right, then, yeah. Is a Leeds player for another three or four years, unless somebody offers. Oh, that's all right. We should have talked about that. Sometime. So um, yeah, so um, Kev Sharp, um, former Leeds player and Calvin Phillips agent, will be in the studio next week with us, and we're back on the morning. We'll be. Live we Wednesday are. morning. Um, yeah. So um, next yeah. Morning, Wednesday Please morning. Please tune in, or if not, download the podcast afterwards. Brilliant stuff. We'll catch you next week. Thanks very much. This is LS11.